Hey everyone, welcome back to their episode of Awesome Finds. Now, as per usual, I have quite the mix of genre and type of record here. And we're gonna start off with this 20th anniversary reissue of Filter's second album, title of record from 1999. This is the 20th anniversary edition, the first time it's been made available on vinyl. And this is put out by my friends over at Craft Recordings. They sent this over to me. And while this looks very similar to the original release, there actually are a couple of extra tracks, including uh, the best things and take a picture. These are both remixes. Opening up, it is a gatefold. You get uh, the lyrics, which is kind of hard to read. <laughs> They're kind of over on top of each other. You get credits and then uh, thank yous, of course. What's cool about this release also is that uh, on these inner sleeves here, <laughs> well, not this one, but I'll show you the second one. There is a great photo right there. Uh, I think, oh yeah, it's this one has a great write-up by Brian Reisman, Reisman uh, which is really nice. Kind of gives you context into what was going on for Richard Patrick. Um, this was kind of a tumultuous time. They had that breakout debut album and then his band sort of fell apart. And on the back there... I believe this is recreating the original CD insert. You know, I never actually owned this on CD, but I really loved the music on here. And there's the back. I'll show you guys the records themselves. Here you have side A, side B, and of course, here we got side C and side D. Now, I will say that overall, this does sound pretty good, however, Depending on which side you're listening to, there is a bit of inner groove distortion, unfortunately. And that's just kind of the nature of LPs. As the, as the stylus gets closer to the center of the record, the angle starts to change. It's covering each revolution uh, with less vinyl in between, if that makes any sense. So, so basically, I, I'm really not the one to explain it, unfortunately, because I don't quite understand it, but uh, I just know that in general, uh, you tend to want to have more quiet songs as the last track on each side. And unfortunately, this record does not have that benefit. So it does get a little distorted. Um, you know, and that being said, it's it's kind of a distorted record to begin with in the sense that it's, you know, it's coming out of the grunge era. It's still got a little bit of that grunginess. But it's also an interesting uh, crossroads between the burgeoning electronic movement and you have this, you know, we're right at the cusp of new metal and, and you have this album, which is sort of straddling these two different worlds. Overall though, I will say that it really, really works. Um, it still holds up. If you haven't listened to it in a while, I suggest you guys revisit it. And if you haven't heard of it at all, check it out for the first time. It's, it's, a, it's a very good album and it sold incredibly well. I believe it went double platinum, which is basically unheard of these days. I mean, people aren't buying records as we all know. Um, but yeah, this, this filter, second album. I mean, very, very impressive. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend it. Just be aware that uh, Depending on your setup, you might get some inner groove distortion. Nothing that's going to make you want to turn the record off, but, it, you know, it might bother you. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think. So, up next, I have Andrus Jones's eighth album, All You Get, from 2018 on Pop Oracle Records. Now, I was not aware of who he was before this record was sent to me, and I did a little bit of research, and turns out he is an a uh, young act he was a young actor in the 80s and he was in nightmare on elm street part four as well as the video game night trap but he also started doing music and he also started a podcast called radio eight ball so the guy is a man of many trades many talents but what i was uh i guess what really caught my attention was he he was born in santa cruz so he is a santa cruz native and he no longer lives there he spends his time between i think washington and la but uh uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, because of that Santa Cruz connection, I wanted to know more about him. And I was very impressed uh, with this record, actually. This is, well, originally it was written, I believe. It was finished. It was almost finished in 2001, but because of life events, deaths, all kinds of things, he kind of 
shelved it for uh, for I don't know more than 10 years. I think he came back to it in 2015. Life was a little bit different, and he ended up finishing it. And what's so interesting about this is that it really does have that 2001 kind of sound, that turn of the millennium, singer-songwriter. Uh, if you guys saw the movie about a boy, like I feel like a lot of these songs could fit perfectly on that soundtrack. This is a very mellow kind of a record. I'm recording this video on a Sunday, and this is like a perfect Sunday afternoon kind of a record. It's not necessarily somber, but there is a little bit of melancholy, but there's a, a lot of pop aesthetics to it. And it's just, uh, it kind of just bounces along and it, and it puts you in a, like I said, mellow, but also just kind of relaxed mood. I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Here is the back. I'll show you guys the record real quick. It comes in a lyric sleeve and a little bit about the record right there, which I thought was very cool. And an early photo, right here from 2000 in Long Beach Convention Center. And there are more lyrics there. Here is the record. I believe this, uh, yeah, this is side one. And there is side two. Overall, I, I very much enjoyed this record. It was a very, it was a personal window into Andres. And stay tuned because there is talk that he may come on the program and I'll get to talk to him more about this record and his career in general. So uh, yeah, anyway, until then, check out his album. Let me know what you think. So up next, I have this record by The Drafts titled Flower of the Cosmos on Silver Sleeve Records. This is from 2019, and I believe this is their 10th album. I had never heard of The Drafts before. They're, they're originally from Brooklyn. I believe they still live out there. They play shows out there. And uh, I... I was a little skeptical because I get records sent all the time and I was like, ah, I never heard of this band, I don't know. And I put it on and immediately it caught my attention. It's got a great hard rock, stoner rock vibe. And it just, it sucked me right in. And unfortunately, uh, this is a promo copy and uh, someone had a lot of fun cutting into this, letting everyone else know that this this was a promo. Uh, um, so don't worry, this record does not come out, does not come with these cutouts. And uh, here is the back, and I'll show you guys the record. As you can see, the even the inner sleeve was cut up. It comes in this lovely marbled purple vinyl. There is side A, and there is side B. So I highly recommend this album, especially if you're into kind of hypnotic, melodic, hard rock. It's got a, a great sensibility, great vibe to it. Uh, it's perfect for a road trip. Yeah, definitely check out The Giraffes. All right, so these next two records were sent to me by a brand new vinyl subscription service titled Bandbox. And I know what you're saying, another vinyl subscription service. And you know, in some ways you might be right, but what I really like about Bandbox is they put a lot of effort, I mean a lot of effort, giving you context into the albums that they're sending. And I would say they go above and beyond what Vinyl Me Please does. Yes, they have a little write-up, and yes, they do a blog on it, but they, this company does two magazines and they send those to you with your two records. So the whole gist of it is they, they uh, each month is a featured artist. So this month, which was their first month, uh, it was Neil Young. And so what they did is they sent a classic album and then they also included a deeper cut. And they included two magazines to give you context for both. Uh, the month after this one was Weezer. So you had the blue album and then you had Everything Will Be All Right in the end. And then uh, this next month, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you guys can go, can go check out the, uh, the site and find out more or uh, write to them. But uh, basically these are brand new records. Um, they are not at this point exclusive pressings because as you know, you have to have a large order. And, and if you go back originally, Vinyl Me Please started off that way too. They didn't get exclusive pressings. So, you know, we'll see if Bandbox can start gaining a following and more and more people join, then eventually they will add unique colored pressings. Now, uh, one more thing I wanted to touch on, the service is $49.99 per month. 
But when you break it down, that is, uh, you know, around $25 per record. And then you got, and then you can factor in the amount of work that goes into the writing. And maybe that drops down to about $10 for the magazine, $20 for the records. So really it's not that expensive. I think it's a pretty good deal for what you get if you are in the market for a vinyl subscription service. So we're gonna start with uh, the first classic album, After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. This is his third album. It is from, uh, gosh, well, this is a 2009 reissue. It was uh, mastered from the original analog master tapes. Beyond that, I don't really know. I believe this was pressed in the UK, but this is, you know, if, if you go and get a brand new copy of this, this is what you're gonna get. Got a lovely gatefold and there's the back, <laughs> literally. Uh, let's see, what else does it have in here? Um, yeah, it came with a poster actually. I think that's what, yeah. Let's check that out real quick. Yeah, beautiful handwritten, really well done. The printing look on here is great. I do have an original pressing and uh, you know, I gotta say this is actually, the quality of this gatefold is much better than the one on my original release. This is not like a kind of thin paper. This is more of like a heavy card stock, really well put together. And if you've never heard after the gold rush, oh my gosh, this is uh, this is just a classic record. It, it's a must own. It's pretty easy to come by no matter where you live. I, I really recommend it. I'll show you the record real quick. I put it in uh, one of these, you know, mobile fidelity sleeves. Here we go. Uh, we have side one right there and side two, and I am wrong. This was this was pressed in Germany. So not the UK, but Germany. And then let me show you the band box magazine that they, they also included. So this is Neil Young, discover your favorite Neil album, who's the ultimate sidekick and more. So this is issue one. I mean, you get a lot written about this album, and this one is done by Alex Rice, the founder of Bandbox, who did reach out to me, really nice guy. And then uh, it's got some, you know, it's got some more albums to check out. That's a great photo. This very high quality, I have to say, this is not disappointing at all. Like, it's pretty well laid out. Not gonna complain, I feel like um, it could use a little bit of design, but overall, I think they did a great job. And uh, yeah, yeah, I love how there's not just writing on this particular album, but it goes into stuff that happened afterwards and what else you should check out, which is so fantastic. I mean, look how they have a, a writing on almost every album by him, including that famous 1982 album, Trans, which I'm still looking for. Even talks a little bit about Rust Never Sleeps, which is a uh, the next record I'm gonna show you. And uh, it shows you, oh, this is a really cool little breakdown. It says, over 200 musicians have appeared alongside Neil across his 42 solo albums. And it kind of shows you who's played the most uh, with Neil Young and includes some famous people that have played with him. Or I shouldn't say famous, but I would say more well-known people. Oh yeah, I forgot that I put this uh, in these new vinyl storage solution dual flap pocket sleeves. These are pretty cool, they're out of Canada. I talked about them on a separate video, but uh, the, uh, the owner of the company sent me these. These are very, very cool. So it's got two flaps, two separate pockets for you know the record itself to be on its own and then you have a spot back here for everything else. So yeah, this is Rust Never Sleeps. It was mastered from the original analog tapes. Let's see, uh, there is the back. Now I also owned a copy of this. I believe it was an original pressing, but I'll go ahead and show you what else it comes with. It has a lyric sheet and this color inner sleeve, some great photos. Rust Never Sleeps, it, it's a compilation live album with some studio overdubs. 
and I don't particularly like live albums in general, but this is one of the few that I actually do enjoy. I think it's got a great sound and there's some classic tracks on here. Now I'll show you the vinyl itself. This, uh, let's see, this was uh, manufactured in the Netherlands. So there is side one and there is side two. And it came in this nice uh, poly lined paper sleeve. Now, I also got sent this uh, turntable mat, slip mat right there, as well as a sticker, just to show you guys. So this is uh, a, another magazine all about Rust Never Sleeps. So that was pretty cool. And it's Alex and Seth kind of talking about this record and, you know, why they picked it. And it's got some great uh, original artwork in there. And they kind of, they go track by track on here, which I think is, is pretty neat. So yeah, that is Bandbox. If you guys are interested, go to bandboxrock.com to find out more information and to sign up. And I want to thank Alex for sending me these. I really appreciate it. These are two classic Neil Young albums, and it's nice to have a really good playing copy of each. So thank you again. So up next, I got the Boston Tea Party with their first and only album, self-titled, put out by, uh, gosh, Flick Disc. I've never heard of this label, never heard of this band, but they're, you know, they're latching on to the psych rock sound of the late 60s. I believe this was released in 1968. And you know, it's not half bad, it's not great, but it's pretty darn good. I think the, the worst part about it, this record is the guitar solos are, uh, well, let's just say I could probably do as good of a job and that's not saying a lot. Uh, but I, so I believe these guys came, you know, they're, they're LA based local guys. I think they, they had a previous band or they were in a previous band doing surf music, saw that the psych thing was, was hot. So they put out this album to kind of cash in on the craze. And it's just an interesting little footnote. Not a lot is known about them as a band, but uh, musically, again, like I said, it really isn't that bad. It, there, there's some nice garage rock elements mixed in with psych. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's not a bad record. I paid 10 bucks for it. I think uh, considering condition and, and how it's a little hard to find, I, I think that was a fair price. I'll show you the vinyl itself. I have not cleaned it. I just put it in this uh, generic paper sleeve here. You know, it's scratched up, but it plays okay. There, oh, this is, uh, let's see, this is side one. I love this label. And there is side two. So yeah, I can't really recommend this record unless you collect the genre or you find it for a good price. Uh, you know, you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube, so I suggest doing that, see if you like it. But uh, overall, it's kind of forgettable, which is probably why we don't talk about the Boston Tea Party that much these days. But anyway, it was just a curious find to have, and I love the cover art. So for that, it was worth it. So at that same record vendor, I picked up Young Jeezy's third album titled The Recession from 2008. Now, I'm not gonna try to fool you and let you know that I'm an expert in hip hop because I'm really not. But uh, I, I had heard of Young Jeezy and I was interested in this record purely because it was, it's pretty much sealed. It, it, it is pretty, it's starting to come off right here, but overall it has uh, had never been open and that intrigued me. And then when I looked up the prices for this record, since it's never been reissued since 2008, I was kind of shocked to find how much it's risen in the past year. Like this thing goes for over hundred dollars now. So I figured, eh, 10 bucks, let's see if I like it. And uh, I can always sell it, trade it away, whatever, if I don't enjoy it. But it turns out I really like this record. It holds up incredibly well. And there's some fantastic, singles on here. Uh, you got some great collaborations with Kanye West and Nas. And it's uh, it's both like a time capsule because it was so relevant to 2008, but it's also incredibly applicable today. And that to me is, you know, one of the, the standards of great art. And uh, I believe these days he goes 
by Jeezy now, no longer young. But here is the conundrum. <laughs> I do not collect sealed records. They do not interest me. I open sealed records to listen to the records to play them. This album is unfortunately probably worth more the way it is than if I were to open it. And so I want to listen to the music. I don't like having sealed records. I had this conundrum with a Pentwater album. I made a whole video about it and most people were saying, don't open it, sell it. But, uh, but keep in mind, the, the people who are selling sealed copies on Discogs, I would say the record itself is in better condition than mine. And which brings up another interesting thing. Just because a record is sealed does not mean it's in mint condition. Far from it. I would even argue probably the vinyls in near mint or mint condition, but the cover itself is probably, I would say VG plus because it has a lot of wear right here where the plastic has started to come off. Uh, you can kind of see right there, it, a lot of the color of the ink, you know, it's been kind of rubbed off. This corner is pretty beat up. Uh, same with that corner and that corner. So this thing is not in near mint condition. There is some ring wear, but I have a feeling that most of that ring wear is on the plastic, not the, the printing, but I won't know until I open it. So do I or don't I? That's where you come in. I want you guys to vote. Should I open this record or should I uh, trade it away or sell it to someone who likes to have sealed records? Or does something in this condition where it's already half open, should I just open it? That's an interesting thing too. Let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm really curious because as much as I love the, you know, the music aspect of records, I can't help but get into the collecting aspect of records, the collector mentality. So yeah, here it is, partially sealed, mostly sealed, Young Jeezy album from 2008. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the music, I really enjoy this record. I highly encourage you guys to check it out for yourself. All right, so these last two records were sent to me by George Clanton. I was so very surprised when I got this package from 100% Electronica, and in there was this nice note from George thanking me for featuring his record, as well as the R23X from last episode, and he included two records that I'll show you guys right now. First up is Negative Gemini's Bad Baby album. This was originally released in 2018 and this pressing is from 2019. Again, I'm using those really cool vinyl storage solution dual flap outer sleeves. These are really, really cool. There's no adhesive. You just kind of tuck the flap back in and it protects the record very well. Here's the back. There is negative Ge Gemini herself. And look at that gorgeous foil cover there. Show you guys the record. It came on this very striking red, almost like a magenta. This is okay. There is side one and there is side two. I think that's a grapefruit. Yeah, that looks like a grapefruit to me. I really enjoyed this record. It was a little on the short side, but that doesn't diminish from the music. It just left me wanting more. So I had to go put the record back on, flip it back over, if you know what I mean. She's got a wonderful sensibility of this new age 90s scene. Like music that my parents were into, there was this compilation called Pure Moods. And I feel like a lot of her songs would fit very well on there. There's a little bit of Ace of Bass on here, but it never gets into that pop territory. Uh, I would just say like the types of instruments musically, that sort of aesthetic is applied to her music. Um, very, very well done. It's got that kind of early 90s electronica kind of sound, but each track is very unique and offers a different slice of I would say her personality and it, it was really just a very joyful ambient listen if that makes sense I just I got captivated by it it was it was hypnotic in a way very relaxing it was a little nostalgic but only because I grew up listening to this to, to this certain style of music that was kind of like for me, it was stuff I heard while walking around in a mall or in a store. It was nothing. It was never music I really sought out for myself. 
And so to hear her sort of take these sensibilities almost like in a vaporwave uh, way, sort of like, you know, pulling from the past to kind of be refiltered into something else. I would say her and George are really a nice pair to play back to back, uh, especially George's, uh, actually that, not that rec, I mean, that record's great too, but I would say even Slide, his record from 2018, like these two records are great, are a great pair to play together. So anyway, thank you, George, for sending this along. So last up, I have a quip with his, I believe, third album called Curse Breaker X. This is from 2019 on 100% Electronica Records. And this, oh my goodness, was such a treat. Ah, from the moment the needle hit the vinyl, I was enamored by this record. And what's even better about it is that it's a concept record in the sense that it's it's taking you on an RPG journey, a JRPG. I, I want to say a Japanese role-playing game, but that's essentially what it is. It's, it's like a soundtrack to a video game that doesn't exist. And I, and I love the sensibility of this record. And it really is a journey. He, he does a fantastic job. Each song feels like you're getting closer and closer to the final boss. And then once that final boss is beaten, the song is over. Uh, it goes into this very joyous song uh, which is legendary equipment. And then we end with Purified, which is such a, like coming out of the darkness kind of a song. Uh, the Curse Breaker X theme is brilliant. I love, love, love the drums on here. This is what I would say another Vaporwave adjacent record. It's not like outright Vaporwave. It's, it's got, it kind of straddles the line, straddles the line between like, uh, 16-bit, 32-bit video games with um, Vaporwave aesthetics. Just a really, really nice record. I I was surprised how much I enjoyed it and the fantastic cover art too. <laughs> Here is the vinyl. This is uh, program one or side one. And there is program two. Look at that. Really lovely uh, pink, pink with blue spotted vinyl. So yeah, if you're into video game soundtracks, vaporwave, synthwave, uh, kind of ambient music, highly encourage you guys to check out Curse Breaker X by Equip. All right, so that will do it for today. I wanna thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to let me know which of these records were your favorites. Until then, I am your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everyone, thanks again for checking out this latest edition of Awesome Finds. If you wanna see more, I put a playlist right there as well as a video that YouTube will choose for me.